Tonight on Furniture Film Classics. The legend continues. Philadelphia Museum of Art with the curator of the American Collection, Jack Lindsay. Hi, Jack. How Hi. are you? Nice to meet how, you. How are you? Nice to have you here. We're yeah. going to look at some federal furniture. Yeah, you know, we're doing some federal, not real federal chairs, but bogus federal chairs. We thought we'd come and look at some real federal furniture. And they tell us you're the one who knows all about this. Well, the great thing about Philadelphia and federal furniture is that's really where the style first sort of emanated into America because the Constitution was here. People wanted Philadelphia to be the Athens of the Western world, and federal style is neoclassical style. Mm. So all the motifs from ancient Greece and Rome landed in Philadelphia in about 1785, 1790. This chair really shows, uh, with its splat and neoclassical urn and drape, that you find on a lot of federal furniture, and this reeded leg is really based on some of the archaeological columns, let's say, that are being excavated at Her sure. Herculaneum and Pompeii. You see the same types of decorations in this sideboard. Um, and the interesting thing is federal furniture depends a lot on veneering and contrasting light and dark woods for its decoration. I see the, uh, the little bit of marquetry or the inlay on the top there. You find that a lot on federal pieces as well, these little decorative string inlays. Mm. Well, you have a fabulous desk over here. Let's go take a yeah, look at that. Yeah, we want to look at that. Oh, a very impressive desk. Isn't that very. great? What's wrong with the inside, though? My eyes? Or is that my eyes? Use these. This is a one-of-a-kind piece. It, was, it belonged to the Rush family here in Philadelphia, and Julia Rush was very interested in a theater in town. So she had a desk commissioned that copied the interior amphitheater. Mm, a lot of free time she had. Exactly. Really a tour de force of cabinet making. Yeah. It's satin wood on the Benjamin inside. Rush's wife? Exactly. Even back then, the doctors had money. This is satin wood and, and the, the other veneers? Satin wood and mahogany. Mahogany? Yeah, and then the carcass is poplar and spruce and pine. Hmm. Five different woods. Exactly. Amazing. You find that a lot in federal furniture. A Beautiful. great mix of different woods. Of course, the mahogany like was imported. The mahogany and the satin woods were mm -hmm. imported, and they liked those exotic woods. Mm -hmm. And back here? Uh, that chair is an interesting version of a bronze Greek chair copied after some of those excavated at Herculaneum and Pompeii. Um, and it's by a New York furniture cabinet maker named Duncan Fife. Really? I, I have one by Barney Fife. <laughs> Herbert Lom. Oh. Oh, oh. I throw. Hey, huh. didn't we learn a lot there? What an interesting man, and it was gorgeous federal furniture. And this is junk, comparatively speaking, and if you have something that you may suspect that may be a real antique, don't you dare strip it because you will diminish the value. Fortunately for us, we can't afford anything of value. Consequently, we can't diminish anything. And that's a relief, huh? This is the fabric we picked. Oh, it's lovely. Look at it. In our last exciting episode, we decided, we decided to do these chairs differently. One in the traditional style and finish. And the other in the wild, wacky uh, something or other. And we've done the padding and everything while the seats are being held tightly with muslin. And so all we have to do is start cutting our federal style fabric. We're going to cut, 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 cut blood Audrey Hitchcock's psycho spurt, spurt, spurt. Mm. Looky here, folks. Spread that over the top there, Now you want to sir? see this here. Yeah, of course, look. We, see, we've got to run it this way, but we're going to run it vertically. Why? Because the grapes are running down. Well, that's part of it. The grapes but if of you wrath. can see, uh, <laughs> and this is the drapes of Raw, or for all you Alan Sherman fans, mm. and we've got elements that are running slightly more slender this way. And since this is a small, sort of slender element chair. But if it was a big we, fat chair, yeah, we'd, we'd run, run it, it that this way. way. Or a sofa, or a couch, or, a big Orson Welles. or my aunt. Let's go. We've cut the seat. Now, in the back of the seat, you see little release cuts. See that there? 
That's a release cut. And that little triangle will fold over and you won't see any ratty edges. You'll get a neat This goes in the way. back. And then in the front, we have the simpler release cut. One will go around this side of the wood arm and the other will go around the other side. So let's begin. Now that I turned it all around, I forget where it goes. Yeah, well, let's get the help in here. Hey. Now all you have to do, all you have to do, I love to say that, is pull the back in. Yeah. Get the middle element going Don't there. Don't you want to get that around there? Eh, eh, eh. And pull it right through there. And I'll pull this right through here. Mm -hmm. That looks good to me. Yeah, let's just leave it. Is this right here? Oh, of course. Really? Because look, you fold like that. But it's that. ripped here. <laughs> now pull that through there. So we'll pull the front first. And where do we put the staple? Oh, right in the center. Yes, I heard it. And then from the center, you work out. Yes, but the center underneath. Right. And then we flip it around so quickly, Siegfried. Remember the little triangles I showed you? They have to be folded under. Punch it in there. Oh. We'll put trim around the bottom. And besides, that gets the lovely upholstery tacks. And on the sides, we'll pull underneath. Now see how this doesn't come to the front? It's OK, because the outside arm will cover that. It'll run down here. All the way to the front. Right, right, right. So we're back with our federal chair, and we're going to do the federal type fabric. Oh, and federally. Don't make a federal. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. And we have the fabric pulled through at the bottom. This is the inside arm. See this? I did mine already. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you did. With no help at all. Hold on. We didn't think you had to see that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to try. Yeah. Now, when we pull this over top, you'll see that that's not enough padding. The wood will rub through, and that's why we always keep the cotton batting, and we place that on top. And you but, want it the same height, otherwise you'd be sitting like this. Yeah, right? and usually I put a yardstick across with a level. Uh-huh, sure. And a transit, Liar. and I get down, down yeah. the pike, yeah. and I have surveyors come. And you put it on the inside, because when you pull this... It's going to go to the outside. Yes. Good. Now I'm going to put a tack in the bottom. That's the way to do it. To anchor it. And I'll put a tack underneath. This is going to be a rolled arm. A rolled arm. Oh, it, it's nice. <laughs> oh, it's All it's, I can say is looking at it is it's nice. I have to pull it around to see that it's going to be tight. That's cool. And I'll put one in the middle. That's cool. Cool. That's cool. cool. And now let's get to the inside and start working it. Yeah. Over here, we Watch can... Watch America. Watch as he works. We can make a fold there because the back is going to cover this end. Now there's really no place to tack in there and and hit it, but I can put one in there that I might have to pull out later. You could put a pillow there too. I, you, always a big throw pillow. Doilies for stains on tables, throw pillows. For gaps. For gaps Large and fabric. Gaps and seams that don't match. I'll put that one there. Now I might want to take that out later. This is just so I can pull this now. Now here's the hard part. I'll peel this back and you will see a channel in there, a channel that is not finished. Here's where this front element comes, and here's where the channel is. And this is where I have to run my staples all the way up to the top. And you could, we're going to put tacks on this, right? Decorative, lovely upholstery tacks. Yes, yeah, we're going to put this. We. We show two of them going <laughs> in. And the guy over there in the corner. Now I'm going to stoop down so all America can see. The bald spot. <laughs> I pull it tight, and I feel for the channel. Oh, and all of Canada and Mexico, too. That ball spot's the, kind, the size of Mexico. Thank you very much. All right, the last tack is in over here. We've defined our inside arm. We'll cut off all the excess later, and now we're going to do the inside back. And here's the back. It's got two generous cuts and a little tail here, just like See? Johnny Weissmuller. This will go be pulled in to the center of the back, and this will be pulled around the other rail so we have full coverage. See, this is where that tail winds up. 
So you've got outside force that'll cover. Pull that one through. Cover the edge of the inside arm. Remember, all fabric attachment is about covering the last, the preceding fabrics, ratty end with the tacks or staples with the next fabric, right? And, right? And I have to tell you, I don't feel too good today, but this is making me feel yeah. a hell of a lot better. Because he gets to see me suffer and scream and cry. Now I'll put one tack in here. Down put at one the bottom, tack in there. All the way in the bottom. There you go. And. Oh, when I pull this, that's not enough, but it's okay because we have lots and lots of cotton batting. Put it up there. Just like that? Yeah, you just lay it in. It sits up there like the hair on Marcel Marceau's head. We pull the top. Has it got enough height? Height? Yeah, 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 yeah. We put one tack in here. And now we start to staple outward. outward. Oh, yes. Outward bound. First, under here. And you know what we have to keep doing? We have to keep turning things around and making sure that we're getting our shape. See over here? We'll make these folds. That's how upholstery is done. They're just folded in. That's all they are. We're can getting make in a, shape. Can you make a fold? Can I make a fold? Can you make a fold? Now we're going to do the outside arm here. But before we do that, we've had a little problem with puckering. Yeah, you see there. this puckering in here? So what I've done is I've done a couple of invisible stitching, going through the burlap over here and stitching into the inside back underneath where the outside where the inside arm is. So you can't see the stitches that way. And when I pull that tight, when you pull that tight, what? It's going to make the pucker go away. Hey. hey it, it did it, too. It's going away. And then I'll just finish off that stitch and tie it off yeah, like finish that. finish it off right up no around problem. the middle. Now we'll do the outside arm. And we've cut our fabric here with a big, giant chimney over here that is going to cover up here because this is where it's going to meet our outside back. Mm -hmm. Now the important part is to position this arm so it doesn't cant one way or the or other. Or cant. Cant work here. And then we flip this up. Flip it up there. And we sight this point right to there, so when we flip it down, it'll be just oh, right. Oh, yeah, you hope. Just right. Put a tack in there. Put one tack right, right at in the there. Edge, right Oh, good. And now, now we get the cardboard tack strip, and okay. we start defining this interior son of a gun. Define it. An interior with burlap and wood. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And... Even though this is curved this way, you can crimp this. You can pull it down, yeah. Oh, just a yeah, little bit. Easy. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Lines up to the front. It does. I don't mind telling you, it's not easy. Something like this is not easy. Sometimes you even got to take them off uh, once or twice. And now, to realign it. so when we tack to the front, it doesn't go wonky, as we call it. You want to put a tack in up here? No, first I'll put a tack right in the middle there. Okay. And now I'll put one in the back here. Now see this corner here? Sometimes you have to work with that and make a tiny little bit of a release cut there. Oh, that's Just a little snoop. Tiny little snoop there. So when we pull it out, Perfect. everything's oh. Looks lovely. <laughs> Sometimes I almost get teary-eyed. Come on, let's do this. Okay. And just to define the entire darn shape. Teary-eyed. Upholstery makes them teary-eyed. I'm going to put a staple up there. And I'll put one there. Hey, that and then looks I'll, nice. And I'll pull the bottom, and I'll put one. It's amazing that there's just air inside here. <laughs> and now we're going to go down the channel there. I I'll like to go down the channel on a small boat. <laughs> and now... I will get right into the channel there. Yeah, make sure you get into the channel, not into the wood. Next, we'll trim this off. We'll tuck this under, and we'll do the outside back. Easy compared it'll to be, this. It'll be wonderful. The outside back hides everything. <laughs> Joe, 
Wentz, uh, he's icing up something. He's icing his bunions. So I got to do this all by myself, and it's called the outside back. Oh, yes, come on. We'll have fun, just you and I. You and I. Huh? Intimate, eh? Okay, here it is. I've got everything hanging just right, and I flip it over the top there, and it's an outside back, just like so many times you've seen me do it. Please don't go and have a malt liquor beverage. Stay with me just this one time. One staple in the top, and then the appropriate amount of cardboard tack stripping. Tack stripping, mimicking the staple in the top. Right there. Yee, yee, yee. And now I go over to the side. Oh, with the lovely tack strip. Pulling it tight as I go. And a one, and a two, and recite your favorite ditty as I do this. Flip it down, make sure it looks good. It looks good. Over to the other side. And then I pull this back down, and I see that it looks lovely. And now I'll flip up the bottom, and I always put one tack right in the middle there. Wham. And now, these are real aluminum tack strips, and if they weren't real, I wouldn't be able to do this. Thanks, Dave. Get the tack strip, sight it up on the outside of the element or leg or where you want it, and then just start to pull and spike through with some pressure. Spike through, or Spike Lee. And Spike, if you're watching, please do the Spil Billy Strayhorn story. You could star in it, it'll be great. Just give me a credit. Born to play Strayhorn. That's, that's a personal note. I like to send little personal notes to people who don't know I'm alive now and then. And then you tuck this around and you pull it tight. And then with the rubber mallet that has been vouchsafed thee, begin to hit. Usually Joe would like be sitting on this chair so when I banged it, it didn't like move over. But he's not here. Finishing up with fabulous upholstery nails. What could be more exciting? <laughs> you can nap any time along here. When you put staples in a visible place on the chair, you must always cover it up with something. Sometimes so, with gimp. That's glued. Right. Or cording, that could be stapled. Mm -hmm. But other times with lots of tedious hammering. And, and you can get like just plain smooth tacks right. or these more antique looking. Yeah, tacks. these are called hammered ones because they look as if they have spots in which they've been hammered, which is good for you because if you have to hammer them into position side to side, they won't make a mark. The smooth ones, they will. That's why I like to use these. So why don't you hold that? No, you put that in. No, no, you hold Wait it there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Which way is that tack pointing? <laughs> that tack is for that chair over there. No, wait a minute. Here, we can push this one in and just give it a little push like that and then bang. Now see this wood piece you here? You don't want to hit that. I don't want to hit that and I don't want the side of this So he's going to have someone to, else do it. To hit it in there. So I'm actually angling it a little bit away so when it first goes in Oh, the chair broke. I might have to bang it towards where I want it to line up. Be easy for me to hit it? Well, it would be, but I actually am done, that one. <laughs> now I'll do another one. Another way That's to do it. It's not in all the way. It's not in all the way. I just said that. Are you sure? I'm positive. Bring me the sledge. Of Alfredo Garcia? No, the Percy. The other way to do it is to hold it that way. You want to hold this part? See, he won't trust me with a hat. <laughs> oh, just holding it. You didn't tell me. <laughs> down in there. Down in there. What, you saying I wouldn't trust you just holding it like this? I yeah. would. Okay. Wait, look. And I'll just hit this nail. Oh, the wrong nail. Uh! And as I said, if it's not in the perfect position, 
You can always bend it and the head will move. No, you can hit it that way. That's what those hammered parts are for. Well, the head will move any way you want it to. As in life? Yeah. Look at this, Orson Welles joined us. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of draping. Hey, the chair is done, and now with a drum roll and a fife, let's there reveal it. The after. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, no, it's not the real old-fashioned chair. Oh, this is the one that was being done off camera. We fooled you. The it's wild, Memphis, wild it's, and wacky. It's Memphis. It's wild. It's wacky. It's Many mine. people are cringing, I'm sure, <laughs> as we speak. Look, but here's the other one that we did. Here's the there. real one with the period fabric and the natural finish. While, if you remember, we did the strange sprayed-on speckled... granite and the ribbon spray. So here they are, two identical chairs. Here's the before. And the after. So oh. with different kinds of fun you can do with fabric and wood, you can make two completely different yet related chairs like and, Kathy and Patty Lane. But there's one thing, always remember to put on your cambric. Or dust uh. cover. Because oh, damn if you, enthusiastic. Because if you don't, the horse hair will fall out. Okay. Hey, that chair doesn't have any back. <laughs> they can't see that. So I'm Joel Arario. And I'm Ed Feldman. Be nice to, to your, your chairs. And furniture, and furniture. All things, even a small shifferola. How many people hate this one? And how many people hate that one? And how many people just hate how us? Coming up next, Bob Vila's home again. Join Mr. Fix-It himself for two back-to-back -back shows, adding contemporary convenience to antique homes, maintaining the class and charm. Stay with us here on TLC.